one of the headlines from it was that he was looking for an alignment of all football in the country um, alongside the, the League of Ireland schedule. Um, now, I, I saw this roundly being applauded, I think, um, in most of the reaction that I saw. Um, I, I suppose maybe the people who were saying that was a good idea were from certain parts of the country. I can tell you where I am, um, it would be an absolute disaster. An, abs an absolute unmitigated disaster. I'm telling you now, it would... My, my own local club would be gone in the morning and so, so, so many more clubs like it. Literally. Right. Okay. Because, because, hold on. So my young fella's under nine soccer match is on at the, is on on the same day at the same time as my under nine, my young fella's under nine hurling or Gaelic football match. Like in rural areas, there's only one winner there, lads. The GA wins every time. Every time in rural areas. Um, like how, 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 explain to me how this, like if their under nine soccer match is on at the same time as their under nine hurling match on the same day, how, what happens? Do you play them both? You'd be fairly sure they're probably both going to be down for 11 o'clock. But like all... if the, if the under nine soccer match is in November and December to avoid uh, clash with Gaelic football, it's also clashing with the worst of the weather, and the, like the pitch will be unplayable. Is that is that not a huge uh, we problem? Are, uh, that we, this addresses we, well down down our way anyway. Gav, almost everybody at this stage has an astro. Vast majority of teams have an astro. Oh, I was going um, to say this is this is just an element of and it goes hand in hand with the in, infrastructure plan you see in other countries where this is just an, where more facilities are needed. And like, on just on a, a different basis, and it's not, but like again, as someone who still plays in kind of amateur football in the UCFL like we've had the same problem over the last couple of months where we've, we've had we've had one game maybe since the since after, after Christmas just because the pitches have been brutal and like, listen it doesn't affect us as much because obviously we're, we're adults or whatever it's worse for, for kids in terms of their development as as footballers but that's where you do I will be of the opinion that I think an alignment sh should work but also that's this is where you need an improvement in facilities as well but the I, alignment I, thing does the alignment thing not make perfect sense? Like, I mean, we're as far, as far as I'm led to believe, we're a total outlier in Europe to have the professional game here running um, during the summer and the uh, underage and amateur game running around the winter. Like, maybe surely it makes sense to align everything, and uh, obviously that helps to build in the pyramid, like a third tier pyramid at, at, at senior level where amateur mm -hmm. clubs and potentially reserve clubs I, from League of Ireland sides. Like, I, does this not all make sense? Yeah. And would it not no. also have a symbolic? effect that you know the big fucking problem in Irish football is that everything is seen as all these constituencies are seen as separate uh yeah. and kind of battling each other and like tearing themselves apart basically when it, whether where a unified game would be a lot more successful like would this not all go a long way to kind of fusing uh, a lot of the a lot of the divides I'm going to ask you well, Shane, on that just a, a point on this like I don't think it's a case of them saying right well all the games are on at the exact same day and at the exact same time like as someone who's in, involved in the grassroots of, of GA and also who understands it more in, in football as well like we just have different days is that is that too simplistic to say where he, after a certain time on a certain day is only for soccer and for Gaelic and Hurdle on another day and after another time when it's still bright does that would that not still make sense? I suppose they're not exactly two associations known for working particularly hand in hand with each other for a That's start. Actually, yeah. um, look, I, I, I completely admit I am purely looking at this through our situation where I am, but I know that would apply to Leash, Carlo, Kilkenny, Wexford, um, you know, Offaly, Westmead. Uh, Longford, I throw Longford in, yeah. I think it's Longford, fair. like in all of those areas. Like what? What? So the status. What I am used to is the fact because I would look after Connor's under nine hurling team and I would look after Connor's under nine soccer team. And what I am used to is that from September till about March, we're out every Saturday playing soccer, and from March until September, we're out every weekend playing hurling or Gaelic football. The fact that those two things are now going to be set to be during the same period, I just. I get all the other pluses, but just somebody explain to me how this is going to work for all of the 
you know, 7 to 30, 11, 13 year olds in all of those counties? Are they being told at seven years of age now, you've got to choose? You have to choose one or the other. That's it. And I'm telling you, vast majority of the time, you know, I know I'm employed by one of those associations, but there's Come probably on. going to be one winner in the vast majority of cases. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I, yeah. Well, they definitely have to choose. I, like, I mean, they're not professional at under seven, under eight, and under nine. No, but, but, but both, but Gav, both games, like, so, like, every game that Connor plays is 11 o'clock on a Saturday. Yeah. You know, every game that they play is, is 11 o'clock on a Saturday. I don't know. Are, 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 so, what are we looking for them to do? Are we looking for them to play one at 11 o'clock and then immediately dart to the next one and be there for two o'clock, one o'clock for them to play their second match of the day. I mean, that's far from ideal either, I would have thought. Um, yeah. These so are, then these, it sounds these, like, corner. sorry, it sounds like then your idea, if we're going to align, you'd be more in favour of bringing the League of Ireland back to a winter season. Where again, the facilities just aren't good enough to No, 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 I'm not. I get that. I I get that can't happen. Let's be honest, that can't happen in my opinion. So it can't. Um, look, I'm not saying I have. I'm not saying I have a solution. I just this is in my like. I just every single, every single talented, mm. every single talented soccer player we have in our club is also a talented hurler or Gaelic footballer. But every is... single, every single one of them, every mm. single one of them. And nine times out of ten, I know if those two things are going to start clashing, I know that it's Ireland and Gaelic football they're going to choose. Which means that, right. like, like the sh forget about the Shane Longs of the world. Forget about the Kevin Doyles of the world. They're gone, lads. They're gone. Because if, if the two things are clashing and you've got to choose one over the other, they will, like Shane Long would admit, Kevin Doyle would admit, they would absolutely, Seamus Coleman, I would say there's a hell of a chance that at eight years, of seven, eight years of age, Seamus Coleman had to choose. I'd say there's a hell of a chance. You would even if it, it's nearly some of it comes from the parents almost. I'd say there's a hell of a chance Seamus Coleman's dad would have been saying, Well, listen, you know, no, it's Gaelic football is 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 our big thing up here. That's what we're going with. 